all on fire and it's consuming them. Every new moon, we gonna be viewing them. With Christ the King, that's just the Jew in them. It's my first day back in New Jerusalem. The world on fire and it's consuming them. Every new moon, we gonna be viewing them. With Christ the King, that's just the Jew in them. Lucifer is seducing you, and he out of bounds. Lucifer stealing the truth from you, you can't hear the sound. Other prophets casting down these imaginations. If you don't listen, you'll receive to yourself damnation. My people waiting for the Illuminati, illuminate them. The Bible got me seeing visions, no hallucination. The other nations, they grasping for straw. They kingdom on menopause, no more growth for this abomination. She is consumed like her name was Cora Dathan. But my people ain't got a pot to piss in. We a nation not desire New Jerusalem. Got streets with gold, and the wisdom of coming with is double fold. Like when Daniel went in the lion's den, I'm trying to get myself from following sin, putting on for my nation. We the Israelites, see, that's a holy convocation that'll never be done away with. We as the sand of the seas, we bringing east, saw the devil down to his knees. But can two walk together unless they be agreed? It's my first day back in New Jerusalem. The world on fire and it's consuming them. Every new moon, we gonna be viewing them. With Christ the King, that's just the Jew in them. It's my first day back in New Jerusalem. The world on fire and it's consuming them. Every new moon, we gonna be viewing them. With Christ the King, that's just the Jew in them. Uh, big Judah, bring it to you, that's delivery. More fire for a heathen, check your chimney. Shouldn't check the disrespect with the laws now. Perfection at its best, eliminate the flaws now. Go this streets, fold them sheets, and make sure you don't let the ground touch my feet. Elevate, go to floor 144, kicking in the door. Let them know I'm much more than just more. Boy, I'm Israel, never was my skin pale. When my kingdom come, the other nations gonna be in hell. Take a breath, just inhale. Instant smoke will choke you if you're out the spirit. When them trumpets blow the deal seal, when you hear it, light up the room when them fringes be swinging. Got vivid memories of when my four parents was hanging. The deepest darkness, but look at when we harking. Nations in subjection, I can predicate the causes Tell me I'm lying, ain't no way, ain't no time to play State to state, and later in my A A-OK, -okay, the prophet's on the way Catch a case, the law is here to stay uh, It's my first day back in New Jerusalem The world on fire and it's consuming them Every new moon, we gonna be viewing them With Christ the King, that's just the Jew in them It's my first day back in New Jerusalem the world on fire and it's consuming them. Every new moon we gonna be viewing them. With Christ the King, that's just the Jew in them. Like a troll on our foes, like a troll. Bridge 
Imagine all these gaps, many holes in our souls. We ain't got a whole lot of glow, let it show as a light. Bring it back to simple, all they sight. We ain't got a feed off the trap that they hype. Ah, put a toe tag on the on me, on me. Got a ray check on so me, so me. Tryna glow up in this glory. My check, my check, my check. All praises, all praises, all praises to the Most High Shalom family, Most High Christ. Bless. What's the second day of the week? Yes, I love saying that. It's the second day of the week, all right? Monday morning. All praise. I know most of you are getting up, heading to work. Some of you may just be getting up just to hear the word of God. But all praise to the Most High. You are here. Um, all praises. Um, Officer Galilee, IUIC, Jackson, Mississippi, to my right. Officer Zarai. All praises to the Most High. So uh, let me get this out of the way. So this morning we are going to get into hopefully a good lesson. Hopefully you all are able to take something from it. Um, we must let go of who we were and not follow the trends of the world today. But we're going to show you today that the trends of the world today have always been a part of the world. You just didn't realize it, okay? You didn't know where it was coming from. A lot of us don't know history. We haven't been taught correctly, so we have to go into these things, uh, history, and bring it up to modern-day times and show why people are – so messed up and what we can do to, to better ourselves. So the name of the class today is The Negro Mind, A Wonderful Thing to Waste. You remember you heard that in your life, you know, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. But not the Negro mind. It's a wonderful thing to waste. Get rid of it. That's what the Bible say. All right? So we're going to get into that. Let's go ahead and send up prayers. Our praises is ready to send up prayers. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night, upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, Neither doth the fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eyes also shall see my desire on mine enemies, and mine ears shall, shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning saying thank you, Father. We pray for an edifying class, Lord, and we pray that you continue to guide us in the strength of your law, statutes, and commandments. For us in your Son, mighty name, I pray. Amen. All praises. All praises. This thing, let me get on. All right, here we go. All praises to the Most High. All praises. So, like I mentioned, the name of the class is The Negro Mind, A Wonderful Thing to Waste. All right? The Negro Mind, A Wonderful Thing to Waste. All right? Um, Give me the quotes. I sent you a, two book quotes at the bottom. You see I sent you that? Give me the first one. Uh, There's two of them. It don't matter which one you do. In what order. Pull that up real quick. The Negro mind, a wonderful thing to waste. You got me? God. Go to John 832. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth 
shall make you free. So the Bible says, this is the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We must learn truth, right? We must learn who we are according to the scriptures and what we are supposed to be applying while we are yet this day in our captivity. Because there's going to come a day, Lord's will, that we are delivered as a people and we have to go into the wilderness. And when we go into the wilderness, we are going to be expected to apply the things that we are rehearsing now, right? Then we're going to be put in situations where we are going to have to do what the scripture says. We're going to be mindful of our mindset. We're going to be mindful of everything that, that is around us. All of our, um, uh, what's the word, all, all of our former sins and, and mindset that we had here in Babylon, we're going to have to release it. We're going to have to let it go. All right. When Babylon gets destroyed, the way that we were thinking, the way that we were doing things is also going to have to be destroyed. That's why now is the best time for us to get our minds right with the Lord and get on the same program. You got that? All right, pull it up. All right. Uh, can you see that, Officer Ryan? Yes, sir. Okay, read that. The underlying part. When the campaign to this, I'm sorry, this is from the book uh, Before the Mayflower by LaRon Bennett, right? I want to read this real quick. All right, go ahead. LaRon Bennett Jr., actually. Go ahead. When the campaign to send Negroes back to Africa moved into high gear, a Negro convention dominated by Philadelphia, Philadelphians urged Negroes to abandon use of the word colored. So they said, so even back then, our people were trying to abandon use of the word colored. Okay, go ahead. And especially to remove the title of African from their institutions. Go ahead. Philadelphia leaders later recommended that the use of the term oppressed Americans. This got a laugh in New York circles. Oppressed Americans, snorted Samuel Cornish. Who are they? Nonsense, brother. You are colored American. So it's always a coon. Okay? There's always one. He said, he said, they were laughing about it, they were joking about it. I said, look, we can't call ourselves African American. We don't want to call ourselves that or colored. Let's call ourselves oppressed Americans. Because as a people, we are oppressed. We were oppressed then, we oppressed today. This Samuel Cornish, he said, who are they? Nonsense, brethren. That's the, that's the, that's the mindset of our people today. I ain't oppressed. I ain't going through nothing. America's good to me. Babylon been good to me. So he said, don't call yourselves that. Sirs, you are colored Americans. Read. The Indians are red Americans. Even though you ain't never seen a red Indian, that's right. something that has been pushed on us. The white man, the one red, he the red American. Read. And the white people are white Americans. And they ain't white. Go ahead. And you are as good as they. He said, you are as good as they, read. And they are no better than you. Yeah, he right about that. They are no better than us. But not in the in not in their ideology. You know, not by what they portray to us. No, they're not. Go ahead. A complicating factor was the presence of Negro nationalists like Martin R. Delaney, of whom Douglas said, I thank God for making me a man simply. But Delaney always thanks him for making him a black man. Wow. It said, Frederick Douglass was like, I thank God for making me a man simply. But this brother here, this brother Martin R. Delaney, he said, nah, I thank God for making me a black man. That's right. That's a beautiful thing right there. Go ahead. Delaney said, no people could gain respect unless they retained their identity. No people could gain respect unless they retained their identity. Read. He urged Negroes to, res to identify as Africans. Blacks, mulattoes, and colors. A short, brilliant man of a most defiant blackness. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. He was what? A short, brilliant man of a most defiant blackness. Of most defiant blackness. His brother loved who he was. That's right. Now, he didn't know he was an Israelite, obviously, mm -hmm. but he embraced who he was. When, when Frederick Douglass said, I thank God for making me a man, he said, no, nah, I thank God for making me a black man. That's right. Can you pull us up, too, so they can see us? And now get the other one. It's on that same, uh, I think you got it right above. Get the other one, the other quote. So when you read these old books, and I'll praise to the Most High for leadership, they've been bringing these books out for years and years and years. And it's good for us to go and read these things because we see the mindset of our people at that time. And uh, LeRon Bennett Jr., in this book, he highlights a lot of inaccuracies about our people as far as, you know, we weren't just Negroes that was just hanging from trees in Africa. He goes into how, you know, we had um, wealth. We had, um, what's the word, um, talents, we were carpenters, we were doctors, lawyers, skills. We had various amount of skills, you understand? It wasn't until we got here in America, you know, that you see 
that um, we have been completely destroyed. We have become Negroes. We were made Negroes here, right? So read that real quick. In a statement reminiscent of Toussaint Louverture, he said, No people that has solely depended on foreign aid, or rather, upon the efforts of those in any way identified with the oppressor. So wait a minute. It says, No people that has solely depended on foreign aid, this aid from your oppressor, or rather, upon the efforts of those in any way identify with the oppressor. They, if they even got the same mindset, they don't even have to be the oppressor, but they even think like him or, or act like him or want to uh, assimilate to him and his culture and his mindset and his religion and his ways and his ideology. Read. To undo the heavy burdens ever stood forth in the attitude of freedom. He said that stands in that stands forth in the attitude of freedom. It's in the way. That's a heavy burden. You understand? It's, it's, it's something that can't be undone, right? So this is the Negro mind when we want to identify with the oppressor in every way possible, solely depend on his food stamps, solely depend on his Christianity, solely depend on his uh, legaliz legalization of marijuana laws, Solely just want to just follow him. And as long as we want to continue to follow him and be attached to him, we're going to continue with the same mindset that we have today, which is a hot girl summer or a dope boy. You understand? A politician or a make America great again. I ain't never seen as many black people love Trump. I like Trump because he's truthful. I don't trust Joe Biden and all that. I don't trust either mice that, that smile in my face and lie behind or, you know, do things behind my back secretly. I, I would rather you just tell me you don't like me to my face. And then, okay, we can both agree on not liking one another. That's fine. I don't, I'm, I, I don't like closet racists. I like open door racists. They're just blatant. Like, this is what we stand. You, you do you what you for your people. You do what you do. for I, I do what I do for my people. I'm cool with that. Okay. Now, you can pull that down. Also. Go to um, the book of Daniel. Let's open up the scriptures. Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 4. So we didn't always have a, a, a Negro mindset, okay? We've always been above all people, but we have to have uh, a defiant blackness, like our brother, uh, Martin R. Delaney, right? We have to have um, the mindset of wanting to, to change what we have become, change our reputation, right, of, of being Negroes and colors and coons and spicks. And come back to the reputation of being the people of God, the holy people of God. And that's what we're trying to do. Okay, go to Daniel 1 and 4. The book of Daniel, chapter 1 and verse 4. Come on. Children, in whom was no blemish. So it says, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, excuse me, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, they were children in whom there was no blemish. Right? Beautiful children. You understand? Come on. But well favored. But they were well favored. They were well favored. Read. And skillful in all wisdom. And skillful in all wisdom. Okay, go ahead. And cunning in knowledge. Cunning in knowledge. And understanding science. So these brothers was bad, man. And not only were they intellectual, not only were they intelligent, not only were they for great use in the kingdom of Babylon, the brothers had no blemish. You understand? Go ahead. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. And they had ability to stand in the king's palace. You can't just put, think about this. You can't just put anybody, any so-called black person in the king's palace, right? Uh, what they say, raunchy back in the day? He said raunchy, right, yeah. you know, not clean, don't know how to speak, you understand? Don't know how to talk to people, don't know how to uh, uh, speak the language of the land that they're in, you understand? Don't know how to act, Right? The Bible is letting us know right here that these brothers weren't like that. These brothers had a special ability of wisdom, right, and cunningness. Read. In whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So they're like, we can teach these we can teach these men the tongue of the, Ch the Chaldeans, right? Come on. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. So let's skip down to verse 17. Verse 17. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge. So for these four children... God gave them knowledge. The Lord gave them a, a, a special knowledge, right, to be able to stand in the king's court. And a lot of our brothers and sisters, guess what? A lot of you that's watching right now had that ability. A lot of you sisters are well-spoken. I know many, many brothers in Israel that are, are biblically sound. They know history. They, they, they know carpentry. They know uh, electronics. They know uh, media, they know a lot of things, camera, photography. We are a well-versed, well-talented people across the board when we have our mind right, okay? But the Negro mind is still in us. 
many of us like um uh deacon uh iphone was going over in his class yesterday he was like look occasionally he loves to do the history class and stuff he's like but occasionally he has to go and check the negro mind why because we'll be very well versed very intelligent knowing all kind of history knowing all kind of scriptures and still be a negro you understand still and when i say negro i mean hispanic and native indians too northern kingdom of israel you negroes too because you think like we think crazy got the ideology of you know so-called white man in you you understand so every, every we always had to go over classes bringing our mindset back to hey look we can't be niggas no more we got to be what the bible says our forefathers were right and this is what the time we back in now where the lord has now given us the same knowledge the understanding the bible is now open to us again there is no excuse daniel 117 come on as for these four children god gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. It said, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams, right? So the brothers had great knowledge, right? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're going to read verse 5 through, I mean, yeah, verse 5 through 9. So the children of Israel, um, even in captivity, they were able to promote us to high levels, right? So when you read later on, it's talked about how Daniel, Mishael, Azariah, and Hananiah were all promoted to the top of the the babylonian kingdom right why because the brothers have skills just like many of us have skills and some of us work in government some of us work in certain high levels of uh, in our in fortune 500 companies and so on and so forth have our own businesses we've always been able to have the ability to flourish in captivity with the right mindset when i say flourish i don't mean for it to be our rest but for us to at least be able to propel ourselves to help our nation it's always been like that through every captivity. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Come on. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Read. Keep therefore and do them. Keep therefore and do the commandments. Read. For this is your wisdom. For this is what? Your wisdom. This is your wisdom. Keeping the commandments and doing the commandments. That's our wisdom. That was the wisdom that Daniel had. When you do read the whole chapter, it talked about how he told him, hey, look, Jimmy, let me eat pulse. I don't want to eat the king's meat, that daily provision, and watch how my skin looks. Watch how healthy, more healthy I am than the rest of the servants. Go ahead. And your understanding in the sight of the nations. And, and guess what? When we keep the commandments of God, that is our wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. Because right now the nations look at us as Negroes and coons and coloreds and thoughts and, and waps. You understand all that wickedness that you are watching, that you're seeing right now that's being pushed on our people today, especially on our sisters, right? It's been, we've always done classes on women since I've been in the truth. It's always been class, leadership's always done classes on the sisters to try to help their mind get right. But in these last days, it's like every class almost, or every other class has to be because it's a, it's a Satan coming after y'all just like he came after Eve. And many of you sisters that reject it, you're going to fall back into that wickedness. I'm telling you, we've seen sisters lately go back to pants, you know, go back to just spirituality and, and just uh, uh, worshiping their own body and stuff like that. Like in the last couple of years, that's been happening. And that's always been the agenda of Satan, to come through the woman. You understand? So that's why we have to get on you, sisters. But it's all love, right? But the Bible says, what? Get it in verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. Keep God's commandments and do God's commandments. Read. For this is your wisdom. This is your wisdom. And this your, is your wisdom. Read. And your understanding. And your understanding. Read. In the sight of the nations. In the sight of the nations. Read. We shall hear all these statutes they, and say. They're going to hear the statutes. They're going to hear the commandments that you keep and read. And say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Are they saying that now with the Negro mind? No. That's why, that's why I named the class the Negro, uh, Negro mind, the Negro mind, a wonderful thing to waste. Get rid of that. You understand? Because only we will only gain respect from the nations when we keep the commandments of God. We'll only gain respect from our own people when we keep the commandments of God. As long as we continue into uh, thought ourselves out, uh, homosexuality, transgender, ain't nobody, don't nobody respect us. Ain't nobody, because all they do is just start line dancing at the protests. That's what happened last couple weeks ago. They start cha cha sliding at them, uh, at the protests. The National Guard and, and, and black folks that was out there protesting, quote unquote, for Black Lives Matter, start tap dancing and jigabooing. Go ahead. For what nation is there so great? Who have God so nigh unto them. They don't talk, man, bro. If you go on Facebook and just look at some of these Edomites speak about our people, especially our people here in Jackson with all this murdering going on, all these all our brothers and sisters acting a fool out here in these streets. Man, these people are like, man, them is not the people of God. You can't, they, we, we can't convince them that we God's people. 
They just won't believe it. That's why they can't believe God black. That's why they can't believe Christ black. They cause like if he black, and those are his people, ain't no way. You understand? And of course, it's also because it's been pushed on them that he's an Edomite. But you know what I'm saying. Read. As the Lord our God is in all things. Read. That we call upon him for. Come on. And what nation is there so great? What nation is there so great? Read. That have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Read. Only take heed to thyself. Wait a minute. He said all that to say this. Only take heed to yourself, Israelites. Read. And keep thy soul diligently. And keep your soul diligently in these commandments that's going to make you wise. It's going to make you a, a understanding a understanding people in the sight of the nation. It's going to make you that great nation that God has set forth on the earth. Read. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Whoa. He said, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen. Why? The Lord brought us out of Egypt. The Lord destroyed nations to bring us into the promised land. The Lord used Moses and Aaron to help bring us out before the people with great signs and wonders. Destroyed the Egyptian gods that we was accustomed to for 430 years and showed us them ain't no gods. Pharaoh ain't got nothing on me. You understand? Destroy Egypt. Egypt still ain't. Egypt still has not uh, bounced back since then. Even when the time of the Greeks, the time of the Greeks ran Egypt, it was a, a kingdom and all that stuff like that. It's still not like the Egypt of the past. It's not the Egypt of the past. When you read Ezekiel 30, I mean 29, it tells you how the Lord destroyed Egypt, made a desolate land, and he made the Egyptians leave. Now they the Sudanese and Watusis. They ain't even in their own land no more. You ain't no real, you ain't no real Egyptian. You ain't never seen a real Egyptian. You understand? I mean, as far as if you went to Egypt now, ain't nothing but Arabs and Ottoman Turks and, and Edomites over there. Right? Come on. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Unless they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Mm, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. We supposed to be teaching our sons and our sons' sons, but it was a breakup there. It was a disconnect there. We became dis discontinued from our heritage for sin, for disobedience. So we forgot. We didn't care nothing about learning the, the ordinances of our fathers, learning the truth about our fathers, learning the truth about who we are. Still today, we don't, a lot of our people don't give a, you know what about that kind of stuff. The Bible, what? No, nah, man, I'm good. Let me go over here and read, uh, uh, the 40, the 48 laws of Mayat, or uh, what the uh, what is the 48 laws of power? What is the 42 law? 42 laws of Mayat, yeah, the 48 laws of power. I was reading that crap when I was playing ball. I was reading that 48 laws of uh uh what is the 48 laws of power and all that auto stuff war. like that. The art of war, which I'm not saying it's not good thing. It's not good to read some of those books and stuff like that. I'm not saying that. You understand? Because those are like mindset books, like to change your mind. But we talking about first and foremost, our mind got to be on the scriptures. Because that's what the Lord said was going to make us a wise and understanding people. Right? Go to Psalms 147, verse 19. Y'all know these scriptures. We're going to run through them, though. Psalms 147, verse 19. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. So the Negro mind is a wonderful thing to waste. We got to get rid of it. We got to get back to the Israelite mind. Right? Come on. I'm going to show you. I got I got examples. I'm going to show you Negro minds. Go ahead. He showeth his word unto Jacob. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Jacob is the, the the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, whose name was changed to Israel. Come on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. And he changed his statutes and his judgments. He gave his statutes and his judgments unto the Israelites, right? So the word of God, of the almighty God, the book of life, of how to live, how to conduct yourselves, where your power lies, he gave it to the Israelites. I don't think we realize what that means. A lot of times we read this scripture and we just read past it. Oh, we read that plenty of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave the word to Jacob. You don't realize what that mean. The, the best diet he gave to the Israelites, the best land he gave to the Israelites, the book, the blueprint of life, the blueprint of how to rule the planet Earth, he gave to the Israelites. We're talking about the God of heaven and earth. He's like, I'm going to choose a people. I got 18 nations, but I'm going to choose one people to give my laws, statutes, and commandments to so that they can be the rightful rulers of the planet Earth. And we take that type of stuff for granted because we so gummed up and messed up in our head. We want to uh, twerk. You understand? We want to be hoes and thoughts, and there's some hoes in this house. And we want to be Negroes with our pants sagging, killing our own brother, selling dope to one another. That's what we want. We want to be uh, athletes. We want to be the, the, the number one player drafted. You understand? That's what we want. But we right here, we reading that the whole earth was meant to be governed by our race of people. But we don't want that. But the Lord of heaven and earth found it fit to say, no, 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 you the people, I'm going to choose you to do this. Who going to break that thing? Who going to say something against that? What nation can say something against that? Can't nobody say nothing against that. 
they can try, they can put stuff out there to lie about it, but it's all lies. That's why I said the truth shall make you free. You learn the truth, you say, damn, the Bible was given to us. Read it again, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. Read. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Come on. He have not dealt so with any nation. When you read that, that should make that should uplift your spirit. Like, man, the Lord ain't dealing with no nation like he's dealing with our nation, man. Our nation is the nation that he chose to do what he what we need to do on this planet Earth, to show forth his praise. No other nation has that uh, right. No other nation can say that. You understand? Go ahead. And that's for his judgment. That's for the judgments, though. Now, we get into something different. The judgments, you understand? The penalties for breaking those commandments because they was only given to us. Read. They have not known them. And they don't know them. So-called white men ain't never been through what we've been through. Chinese, Arab, Moab, Ishmael, Ammon, the Nilotic, um, uh, Hamite, Hamitic tribes. They ain't been through what we've been through. You understand? Nobody has. And the reason for that is, is because God chose us to lead the way. God chose us to govern this place. We said we don't want to govern it. He said, okay, well, I'm going to give it to the hands of the wicked then and let y'all fall up under his wicked behind. And let him push sodomite agendas on you. And let him force you, your sons and daughters, to be in prison, to be on welfare. You understand? Y'all don't want to serve me? I right, bet. Well, sir, that false image then right there. Sir, that stone right there. We look foolish as hell walking around a stone, kissing a stone. And then you got Islamic bro brothers that Islam want to argue with us. Man, you ain't, we ain't arguing with you, bro. Sus. We ain't arguing with you about no nation of Islam. You want to be in that crap? Go ahead. But just know you foolish as hell for not doing your research. You just like a Christian. Just following, just following something blindly without doing the proper research, right? Uh, go from there. Go to Romans 3 and verse 1. So the Negro mind is a wonderful thing to waste. We got to get rid of that mind. Let's waste that one. The Israelite mind, that's a terrible thing to waste. We got the ordinances of the Lord. Go ahead. Romans 3 and 1. Romans 3 and 1. Read. What advantage then hath the Jew? Wait a minute. We got an advantage? Yes, sir. The Bible says, what advantage then have the Jew? And I'm not talking about the Jewish man that live over there. His advantage is he got Satan, and this is his world. You understand? But what advantage has the Israelite, the repentant, keeping the commandments, keeping the commandments, loving the Lord, Israelite? What does he have? What is his, his and her advantage? Read. Well, what profit is there of circumcision? Go ahead. Much every way. He said much every way. Why? Chiefly. Mainly. Read. Because that unto them. Because what? Unto them. Because that's unto them. The Israelites, the Jew, read, were committed the oracles of God. Wait a minute. The oracles of God were committed to the Israelites. Was given to the Jew to give you the advantage. And we walk out here thinking that, no, 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 no. You got an advantage when your credit score is 690, 750, 800. No, 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 no. I, 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 got, I got advantage when I, when I take these supplements, these steroids to make me stronger. No. Your mind messed up. I got an advantage when I join a Greek fraternity. When I join a Greek fraternity and the boule, that what gives me, uh, what is it, boule or boule? One of them. It's boule, ain't it? When I join that, oh, oh, let me become a mason. That's how I get an advantage. Yeah, that's what I need to do. I need to join these secret societies. I need to find a way to become a Republican. I need to find a way to get close to Trump. No, that ain't what the Bible say. Read it again from the top, verse 1. Verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? The Bible said what advantage does, does the Jew have? Read. And what profit is there of circumcision? And what is the profit of circumcision? Read. Much every way. He said much every way. Come on. Chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. And what happens... When the Israelites keep the oracles of God, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. What happens when the Israelites keep the ordinances of God? We read earlier that it would, it would give us wisdom in the sight of the nations. But not only wisdom. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Read. And it shall come to pass. Come on. Thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the Bible says, if we would hearken diligently unto the Lord thy God, read. To observe and to do all his commandments, uh -huh. which I command thee this day. Read. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. When the Israelites keep the commandments, we have an advantage. Why? Because we will be on high above all nations on the face of the earth. You understand? Are we above all nations right now? No. We at the bottom of all nations. 
and the Negro wants to stay at the bottom of all nations. We're going to show you today. The Negro want to stay at the bottom of all nations begging for crumbs. When at the last days the Lord has given us the truth, he has said, hey, look, I'm going to send my son's spirit. They ain't going to think they Negroes no more. I'm going to show them that they the people of God. I'm going to have their leaders bring out books, read old books from the 1800s, the 1700s, to show them that you've always been the people of God. I'm going to pull out hieroglyphics. I'm going to pull out ancient maps. I'm going to pull out ancient photos to show my people that they lied to you about your history. And then Negroes going to say, you know, I don't give a, I don't care nothing about all that. Why y'all bringing all that out to me? Foolish. It's a, the Negro mind, that's a wonderful thing to get rid of. It's a wonderful thing to waste. Get rid of it. Because a lot of people in Israel still got the Negro mind. We got all these classes bringing all this wisdom out. Negroes say, no, she fine. That dope. We got to re-examine ourselves. Read it again. And it shall come to pass. Come on. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy if God. If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God. Come on. To observe and to do all his commandments. Read. Which I command thee this day. Read. That all that the Lord thy God. Read. Will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. The Lord said, I'm setting y'all up. I'm going to put y'all up. I got you. Just do what I say. I got you. Watch this. Read. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. Everybody want a blessing. Now, what do these blessings entail? Go ahead. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Read. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. So you want the mansions. You want the nice houses. You want to live in a neighborhood where there's no crime. You understand? You want your children to grow up in a, in a, in a non-hostile environment. The Bible says keep the commandments. But they won't be here because this, this ain't our rest. But we understand we do these things in the kingdom. That's how it's going to be. We're going to be blessed in the city of God. Read. And blessed shall thou be in the field. And blessed shall we be in the field. Meaning what? Our crops ain't going to never stop. I mean, when you read in Leviticus 26, it talk about when one, when, when, when one crop is done, the next one going to be coming in. When it's time to just finish drinking all the wine that you that you uh, got from the vintage, the next the next batch of wine gonna be ready. You understand? I'm butchering it, but that's what it says. Read. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Read. And the fruit of thy ground. The fruit of your body is your children. Your children gonna be blessed. Our children ain't blessed out here, man. Nope. I'm watching the uh, uh, my little girl, my baby, my youngest. She love that uh puppy dog pal. She love that pup pup. Pup, puppy dog, it's in my it's in my head. That's all I hear. Pow. That's all I hear all the time. So I'm watching it with her last night because she just sit there, she just stare at it. So we just sitting there watching it, and I started examining the show. I said, look how these Edomites make the white man like he just so just such a saint. The 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 the, the owner of the the uh the puppy dog pals, the the show is about the dogs. Okay, the dog run around, they do adventures and stuff like that. But everything they do is to bring joy to their master which is the white man and i was like damn this thing ain't deep they do everything throughout the whole show and at the beginning of the show he leave he go do something and the whole show they want to try to help him out and by the end of the show he come back they jump in his lap and he you said some good dogs great job i'm proud of you and i said damn they're teaching our children to seek validation from the white man that's what that's teaching our kids to seek validation from him. And, of course, she a baby. She ain't thinking about it that deep. Everybody, I'm thinking about it. I'm looking at it like, God, dog. Instead of seeking validation from the Lord so that we can be blessed in the city, so we can be blessed in the field, so we can, our children can be blessed, the fruit of our land can be blessed, so we can own slaves. Because that's what the Bible say, don't it? All nations are supposed to bow down to us and follow us. Right? Give me that real quick in Genesis 27. And verse 29, because I don't want nobody to be like, this dude crazy. I'm, I'm just now logging on. This dude to my own and slaves. What the hell is this? I'm just telling you what the Bible say. Ock. Get that real quick. What that is? Genesis 27? Yes, sir. Read it. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 29. That's it. Let people serve thee. That's what the Bible say. Who is he talking to? Go up to verse 27. Verse 27. I'm sorry. Where we at? Verse 20. Where is it? Where he going to get it? Oh, no. Keep reading. Keep reading. Just keep reading from where we at. Let people serve thee, uh -huh. and nations bow down to thee. Come on. Be lord over thy brethren. The Bible said be, that Jacob was set up to be lords over his brethren. That's where the black man, black woman, Hispanic, and Native Indian man and woman, the Bible call you the Israelites, you God's chosen people. The Bible says all nations supposed to serve you. 
but now all nations above us. Read it again. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Read. Be Lord over thy brethren. Be Lord over thy brethren. Who is our brethren? Who is our brethren? The white man, yeah. Esau, and every other nation on earth. Yeah. We're supposed to, we supposed to be lords over them. Read. And I let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And let your mother's son do what? What that say? Bow down to thee. But the Negro said, no, brother. <laughs> Y'all are caught. You're a hate group. I'm a hate group from one dominion. Our brother, uh, what his name was, Martin R. Delaney said, I'm defiantly black. I love my blackness. I don't thank God just for making me a man. I thank God for making me a black man. That's what the brother said. Now, we talking about in the early 1900s, late 1850s, somewhere around up in there. I don't know the exact date. I ain't looking at it. You understand? But we talking about back before Jim Crow. We talking about back before, uh, uh, before we wanted to assimilate, before the women's feminist movement. You understand? Before all that crap came in, civil rights movement, all that stuff had to come in to try to show people that we was equal. He was like, to hell being equal. We greater. You understand? And that's the mindset we got to have now. We greater. We got to start thinking and living greater. The Negro mind, we got to get rid of. See, I ain't even had these scriptures. See what y'all done did? Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 28. <laughs> so that was the blessings for keeping God commanded. It was just a few of them, right? Verse 28 now. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28. Read. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Bible said the Lord going to smite us with madness. The Lord going to smack you upside your head. When I say the Lord going to smite you, that means he going to fly. If, if his hands, it'll say madness on it, and he smack you upside your head, now you got madness printed on your head. Now you got, oh, we should be equal. Oh, I know. Turn on my own brothers for the white man. No. He ain't giving you nothing. He don't matter how much money you got, no matter what politic, uh, politician or uh, whatever. Man, I imagine this. You know all the, all the black folks that's, that's shouting Trump, 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 Trump. If he lose, them same black folks going to jump the bandwagon and go over to the Republic. They ain't going to fight for him. You know what I'm saying? Because our people just go with whatever's winning, whoever's winning. You know what I'm saying? That's why our people go with, instead of going with God, because God always winning. But we thinking in our mind, like, no, 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 it's the white man. He winning. No, sir. No, ma'am. The Bible, God is winning. So he said he going to smite us with madness. We mentally unstable. The Negro mind is messed up. Read again. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Read. And blindness. We can't see. We cannot see clearly. Read. And astonishment of heart. And what? Astonishment of heart. And we always astonished. Why they do us like that? Why we can't never get why we can't never get what we deserve? When we gonna get reparations? Never. Your reparations is when Jesus Christ returned. That's where your reparations is. When Christ returned and delivered you from the hands of your enemy and put you and take you and your people back to the promised land, which was promised to our fathers, the heavenly city. We went over that Friday night. You understand? Go ahead. And thou shalt grope at noonday. That's why our people are so caught up in all this BS. We groping at noonday. Here it is. The sun is up. We in the last days, and the truth is shining evermore. You can go on Google right now and type in yokes of iron. It'll pull up Deuteronomy 2864. Negroes had yokes of iron on their neck. You can go on Google and say, who are the real Jews? It'll say blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. You can go on Google and type in King Herod. It says, an Idumian. An Edomite. So the Greeks are Edomites, right? Because he descended from the Greeks. And the Romans are Edomites. Because when you read the uh, classical baby, b uh, Bible baby names, it said Esau was the father of the Roman Empire. So you go look at that. You say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Bible say God hate Esau. And he loved Jacob. When you read the Bible, it say Jacob was black unto the ground. Something in your mind should click and say, we Jacob. They Esau. God love us. God hate them. God going to bless us. God going to curse them if we keep the commandment. That's what your mind should say. But instead, you want to be an Egyptologist. You want to be a dusty Hamite. Because you know, the Canaanites was involved heavily in homosexuality. The Egyptians was involved heavily in homosexuality. Blood sacrifice. Abortions. Now, I ain't talking about abortion before the baby come out. I'm talking about the baby being a four, three, four, five year old child and they throw it in the fire to Molek. But we want to do that though. You understand? Read it again, verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noondays as the blind gropeth in darkness. So we groping at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. Our people are groping in darkness right now. Blind, can't see. Trying to find our way. 
but the Bible right here. IUIC teaching the class three days, seven days a week, three times a day. Sometimes four or five times a day if you include the various different radio shows on different platforms that's going on. Sometimes IUIC teach all day. There is no excuse. Read. And thou shalt grope at noondays as the blind gropeth in darkness. Read. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Why we ain't prospering? We is not prospering because we don't keep the commandments of the Lord. That's why we ain't prospering. That's why we at the bottom. Read. And thou shalt be only oppressed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We gonna get out of oppression by voting. What they say? And thou shalt be only oppressed. Wait a minute. So wisdom and knowledge and changing our mind is the only way to come out of oppression. Because as long as we grow up in that noonday and these different ideologies, we are only oppressed. Read. And spoiled evermore. And spoiled evermore. Read. And no man shall save us. And you. nobody going to save us from these conditions. Skip down to 37. Verse 37. Come on. And thou shalt become an astonishment. And we have now become an astonishment. We're going to show you today. We are an astonishment to these nations. They sit back and laugh at us. They sit back and uh, what they call it, snare at us. The scripture talks about uh, gnash on us with their teeth. Call us different names. Watch it going to tell you. Read. A proverb. A proverb. That's a wise saying. Read. And a byword. And what? A byword. You're not called an Israelite. You're called African American. You're called a thug. You're called a thought. You're called a hot girl. You understand? You're called a hot boy. That's what um, juvenile names called themselves back in the day. The hot boy. What that mean? We got dope on us. <laughs> we hot. We done stole something. That's what that mean. And we glorify the ghettos. We glorify the hood. Man, I'm from 76 and 12, man. Hey, man, I'm over here from the east side, man. Where you from, my nigga? I'm from the west side, man. But you're on the streets. You don't know you're on the corner. That's not a, a lot. Now, I would have been happy to say, I'm from, I live on Black Wall Street. I live in, on Greenwood Ave. I live here. Because at that time, that was something to be proud of because we had our own uh economy basically uh, economy within an economy we've always been a nation within a nation you understand so that might have been something at that time to say that you was proud of that you lived there in tulsa you understand but now the dilapidated neighborhoods that we live in that ain't no brag ain't nothing to brag about we're still in captivity we stay still overcharged the interest rates out the roof you understand i know they lower right now because of the whole COVID, but they still high for us <laughs> there you mean you ain't getting no lower interest rate than the eater might coming in there so we only oppressed crushed always man right go give me the 12 racist countries against blacks in the world i'm gonna show you what the bible means when the lord says read it again verse 20 uh what was it 37. verse 37 read it again then thou shalt become an astonishment an astonishment a proverb. A proverb. And a byword. And a byword. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead you. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead you. Everywhere we go, we're an astonishment, we're a proverb, and we're a byword. What you got, Ock? It ain't hurt. It ain't working. You ain't pulling it up. What? Are you good? Okay, you got. Oh, okay. I'll pray. <laughs> Pull that up for me real quick. I want to show you that we're a byword amongst all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Everywhere we've been led into captivity, we are a byword, we are an astonishment. Right, y'all pay attention to this real quick because the Bible tells us about these things. Right, go to see all because it. I hate when they do this. It's just like going each country. I want to show you this real quick. See all. Can you press that real quick so we can see it? Man, they got stuff all popping up everywhere. God dog. Uh, press see all. God Lee, they ain't buying nothing. We ain't buying none of that. We're not here to purchase anything. We're here to see truth. Okay, all praises. Uh, can you zoom in just a little bit? Make it a little bit. Just that's on the words a little bit if you could. I know it's uh it's a whole bunch of stuff they're trying to sell to it. Gonna, sister's gonna be shopping in a minute instead of listening. Yeah, pull that down. I know it's I know it's in the way. Just, yeah, come come out just a little bit. All right, just read that off. I'm sorry, I don't mind. Right. Go ahead. Avoiding these twelve most racist countries against blacks in the world would probably not be a good idea if you were thinking of traveling or relocating. So it says it wouldn't be a good idea to go to these places if you felt if you wanted to travel or relocate. Now you would think that we would be able to leave and go somewhere else and, and be accepted. Right. But these twelve places, the Bible I mean I said the Bible. Well the white well the Bible do tell you this, but the white man telling you you don't want to go to these places, right? But the Negroes say, I'm going to go anyway. I'm going to go turn up in France, in, in Prague, <laughs> Portugal. Right? Keep reading. Despite the amazing advancement of science and technology, 
the humankind remains somewhat underdeveloped in regards to certain aspects. Wait a minute. So it's saying, although we got science out here, although we got nuclear weapons out here, we got iPhones, we got Wi-Fi, we got uh, all these different technological advancements in the world today. We done been to the moon. We got airplanes, jets, 5G. He said, but yeah, but humans haven't developed that much, though. Humans still racist. They still hate black folk. That's basically what he's saying. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. True. We have progressed a lot. And we may freely say that the world has never been as connected as it is today. Scroll up, Op. People are traveling more than ever and meeting different cultures, which greatly contributes to eliminating racism. No, it doesn't, Reed. Especially when it comes to isolated places where there are little or no people of other races at all. However, ignorance and bigotry are still not eliminated entirely, and racism is openly an issue in a great number of places. Now, get the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32 and 8, real quick, because what our people don't realize is what. No, no, no. I know what I want. Give me Genesis 11 and 1. Let me show you something about the Lord of heaven and earth. God got the infinite wisdom, man. We got to go to the Bible about these type of things. Why, will, after all these technical, technological advancements, why, after we are in, in, a, in a day and age where you got. You, you can basically change your gender like somebody can change they you know they still a woman but they can cut certain parts off their body take certain hormones steroids or uh testosterone whatever it is to make themselves look more manly like that's literally something that people are doing today you understand but racism ain't gone hmm let's see why genesis 11 1 genesis chapter 11 and verse 1 and the whole earth was of one language uh -huh. and of one speech. Read. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go, go to. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to. Let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. Uh -huh. And let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So they said, hey, look, man, let's go up there and fight God. That's what they were saying. Nimrod was leading this. Let's go fight the Lord. Let's go fight God. Because that's what Nimrod told. We, we, uh, we, we got that understanding this past Sabbath. Nimrod basically was telling people that he uh, went up to heaven, cut God's head off. So they was worshiping him as God. So that's why they started building this tower up to the heaven. They thinking they finna fight the Lord and the angels in Christ. Mm. Go ahead. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built it. Read. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. Wait a minute. These people together, they one. Read. And they have all one language. And they all got one language. Read. And this they begin to do. And now they want to try to come and fight against me and Christ and the angels. Read. And now nothing will be restrained from them. And now they're going to think that they're strong enough to handle me. <laughs> That's basically, you know how a, a child think he grown now? His chest poked out? Nah, hey, I'll whoop my dad. Oh, okay, I right, bet. Read. Which they have imagined to do. Read. Go to. Let's go down and there, and there confound their language. So the Lord said, we got to go down there and confound their language. Read. That they may not understand one another's speech. So they won't understand one another's speech. God don't never God never wanted all races together. That's democracy. That's Christianity. Mm -hmm. That's e that's Esau. Because Esau said, Yeah, we're all one, but I'm on top though. Right. We all one, but y'all niggas on the bottom though. Y'all Hispanics on the bottom. Y'all Native Indians on the bottom. Yeah, we all one. Yeah, we yeah, we good. Yeah, yeah. Democracy. Christianity. Yeah, God's so little world. Uh huh. Hang the nigga right there. Beat her over her back. Cut us, cut us stomach open and pull the baby out, and then smash the baby's head. Throw their baby's head against the rocks. Feed their baby the gators. Oh, but God's so little world. What? That makes no sense. But that's how gummed up in the head, we, brain we are. We think, oh God, I want everybody together. Have you not read the book of Genesis? This is the beginning of time. Even back then, God said, I don't want all y'all together. Go earlier. We said, what well, other nations are supposed to serve us? So how we all one, but these nations are supposed to serve us. How we all won, but God gave us the commandments, gave us the advantage, so that we can rule over all nations. How the hell is all people equal? All men created equal. That's how you know Martin Luther King wasn't reading the Bible. Do we love our brother for what he was trying to do? For the fight that he put up, for his love for his people? Do we admire that? Absolutely. But his ideology, Mahatma Gandhi, you understand? We don't, we don't agree with that. We don't agree with all nations being the same. We all want people. We don't believe he had no dream. You understand? Because we understand that the Bible doesn't say what, if it doesn't coincide with the Bible, if it don't line up with the scriptures, I don't believe it. You understand? We can't believe it because it's not the truth. What was I at? I forgot what scripture I was at. I forgot what scripture I was at before this. Oh, no, we were reading that. We was reading the article. Go back to the article. We say I. 
You was finna go do the rhyme at 32. I was finna go do the rhyme at 32. You right. Keep reading in Genesis. Yes, sir. Verse 8. I'm sorry. Verse 8. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence. I got to stay on track, man. I be jumping all over the place, man. Come on. Upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. So they couldn't build no more because they couldn't understand each other. One day, we like, yeah, man, look, you make sure you put that over there. I'm, I'm going to start over here. Then one day, it was like, blah, 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 blah. you're like, what the hell wrong to do? And then you, I'm talking to you. You talking to me. And you blah, 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 blah. like, what the hell wrong? Man, what the hell? Man, this dude crazy, man. I ain't working by this dude no more. He can't. He talking crazy. He talking gibberish. You go to your people, you're like, man, that dude over there in the Ammonite, he over there talking crazy. You understand? We understand each other. And then he could have a night go talk to his brother and say, man, them Hamites over there crazy as hell, man. They over there talking crazy, them Egyptians. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because the Lord confounded the languages so we couldn't understand each other. Read. Go ahead. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. The name of it became Babel. That's what Babel, Babel means confusion. It got, the Lord caused that confusion to confound the languages so they couldn't all be one race. Right. And today we live in Babylon, the land of confusion. So we ain't supposed to be together, man. It's never been that way. We was better when we were separated. We was better when we were segregated. Look up the facts. Look up the facts. Okay, go uh, go back to the article real quick. I just want to run through the countries real quick. I don't even want to have to read the little stuff with it. I just want to run through the countries real fast, right? Watch this. Pull that article back up for me, officer. Yes. Run through the countries. Go down. So it's saying basically... There's a lot of bigotry in great numbers. Even though we technologically advanced, there's a lot of uh, bigotry, right? I see the, the 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 numbers on the screen, too. I see the uh, Genesis on the screen. If you can take that off. Keep going. Keep going. I just want to run through the, I just want to run through the countries real quick. Go on down. Go on down. Okay, so the USA is the 12th most racist, racist country. We know that's a damn lie. That is a lie like all get out. I'm going to show you how it's a lie. Read that where it says the independent. Uh, the USA. The independent wrote about us, wrote about this. And according to CNN, 87% of black Americans say they face a lot of discrimination in the United States. So how the hell is number 12? 87% said so they receive uh, discrimination in the United States. So how is it number 12? That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Right? The Bible says they that hate you shall reign over you. So whatever we at, Every government hates us. That's what the Bible says. This thing says 87% of black Americans say they face. They did, did they interview every black American? Because they interviewed every last one. I'm pretty pretty sure one of us wouldn't have been able, most of us wouldn't have been able to, yeah, I, I sense racism every single day. Every single day. And earlier it says the south of the United States is probably where you are most likely to encounter racism. So they don't encounter racism in New York. Most of these videos and movies we've been seeing, it's been like, what was going on in Pennsylvania? What was going on in New York? What was going on on the West Coast? What you talking about? Right? Go ahead. Go down. So the USA, what they say? Germany. Germany is one of the most racist, full of skinheads. Keep going. The UK. Go ahead. Thailand. So, so they hate you in Thailand. You understand? Uh, uh, Ammon and Moab and all of them. Lebanon, they hate black folk. In Beirut, where that uh, destruction was just at, just got blown up at. Saudi Arabia, they hate black folk. Yeah, Ishmael hates you too. Russia, oh, I, I've been to Russia. Listen, the Edomites in Russia, teeth are green. They the most pale Edomites I've ever seen in my life. When we got to the hotel there, we went up to the desk, and it was a real, real pale Edomite with red hair. And she had she had like blue eyes, but her blue her blue show them the bottom of your thing. Show them the bottom of your uh what's name. Her eyes were like this color. It was square. I was like, man, she's scary looking. And she smiled and her teeth were green. I was like, yo, this is crazy. They have no sunlight there. Nothing but snow. They they the most pit. Oh my God. Hideous. And they hate black folks. They stare at you like. Like, you ain't right. Like, something wrong with you. I knew a brother that played in Russia. He was making a lot of money too. He said he had to have a bodyguard with him. The team had to assign him a bodyguard because when he would leave his house, Edomites would be throwing stuff at him in the street. He got billboards out there. They got billboards of him. He was the top player, won many championships, made millions of dollars playing in Russia, and still saw racism. Showing you that this, man, come on, when the Bible say we're going to be a byword amongst all nations, you a byword and astonishment and a proverb amongst all nations. They don't care what position you in, right? South Korea, they hate black folks. Keep going. Israel, wait a minute. That's our homeland. Right. But they hate us there. 
right? Come on. They're trying to exile all our people out of there. Jordan, they hate black folk. Wow. I would hate us, too, after what we did to Jericho. Right. <laughs> Passed over Jordan and just start whooping everybody. I would hate us, too. China, they hate black folk. Ain't that what nigger king at? Right. In China, that's <laughs> what nigger king is. Go ahead. And India. So India is the number one racist country against black folk. India. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, these folk, man, pull it down if I get mad, man. These folk be lying they ass off. Somebody from the USA wrote this. Yeah, I know somebody from, <laughs> yeah, you know somebody from the USA ran it. But amongst these nations, watch this, go to Deuteronomy 2864. It get worse. So the Negro mind is a, is a wonderful thing to waste. Get rid of it because they hate you in all nations. It's best to come back to your God where your wisdom lies. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Come on. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Read. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there and there thou shalt serve other gods. So <laughs> a brother just wrote. He said, I'm living in Thailand right now. He said, the people out here ain't that bad. That's how you know Esau the devil. He going to put Thailand number three or four, but the USA the last on number 12. But 87% of black folks in the USA say they get racial discrimination. You see how Esau is? He make himself look good. Like, we ain't that bad. We we good. It's Thailand. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> Read. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people uh -huh. from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So the Lord has scattered us amongst these nations in captivity. Read. And there. And thou, where? Then there. And there amongst these nations. Read. Thou shalt serve other gods. You shall serve other gods. You're going to serve other races. You're going to serve other uh, 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 religions, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, uh, Krishna, Hinduism. All these wicked religions, Egyptology, Pan-Africanism, all that. Everywhere you scatter, you're going to serve these idols. Come on. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Even, well, even thou nor thy fathers have known, read. Even wood and stone. Even what? Wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Keep reading. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. So the Negro says, no, I can find ease here. I can go around God. I can go around what God says, and I can join a political party. I can go around what God says, and I can just get, up, get on board with the LGBTQP plus community, whatever. Right? I can, get a, I can go around God's game plan, and I can follow my own heart. In my own mind, and I can change the nature of this white man. I can change the nature of the Moabites, which is the so-called Chinese, the Ammonites. I can change them, Lord. You ain't right. I'm right. That's what we say. That's the Negro mind. Come on. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. We don't have no rest here, man. Come on. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. Wait a minute. Here we have a trembling heart. In Thailand, we got a trembling heart. In all these different nations. In India. Because I, I know because the, uh, the, the dialects, right? We got brothers out there that are scattered, right, amongst these other nations. In Lebanon, we got brothers out there. We got brothers in Saudi Arabia. We got brothers in China. We got brothers and sisters everywhere scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And everywhere we are, we hate it. Everywhere wherever we are, we segregate it, right? We in the hoods. We in the ghettos. The Lord real. Read. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. A trembling heart. And a failing of eyes. Failing of eyes. And sorrow of mind. And sorrow of mind. Everywhere. Everywhere we go. Right? So go to Psalms 106, verse 35. So everywhere we go, we got sorrow of mind. We have sorrow in our hearts. We scattered amongst these nations. We don't know our homeland. We don't know who we are. We've been discontinued from our heritage. So guess what we end up doing? Read verse 35. Psalms chapter 106 and verse 35. Read. But we're mingled among the heathen. We mingled among the heathen. Why? Because we're amongst them. So we learn their works. We learn to be Greek. We learn to be uh, like uh, the, the, the two-time NBA MVP. Uh, Giannis Atisakumbo, he think he Greek, but he ain't no Greek. That brother in Israel, like, you seen that brother? Right. That brother a monster on the court. You understand? That brother ain't no damn Greek. That brother is an Israelite if I ever seen one. I had a brother that played with me. He was from France. He played with me in college. His name was Amat Mbaye, right? He was from uh, Ethiopia originally or somewhere in Northeast Africa originally. Then he moved to France when he was young because he was recruited to play ball. Now, his mama, her daddy, Edomite, but his daddy, black. You understand? This dude could jump out the gym. This dude can do all kind of different dunks in his flip-flops. Dude was a monster. He's still playing ball to this day. So I know them ain't no, I know he wasn't no Frenchman. I know he wasn't no Edomite. This dude an Israelite. But they've convinced us from where we grew up that we are of that nation because we've mingled amongst that nation. Come on. But what mingled among the heathen. And did what? And learned their works. And they were and just like Amat 
just like uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, just like a lot of these for, so-called quote-unquote foreign players, they learn the ways of the, of the place that they were. They sport they sport the flag um, happily, right? They keep the customs that they keep in that land. Why? Because they learn those words. Because that's where they were born. Just like when you read in Acts two, it said we hear them speaking our tongue wherein we were born, right? Come on. And they served their idols. And guess what we did? We served their idols amongst these nations. Read. Which was a snare unto them. And those idols became a snare unto us, caused us always to fall, never to prosper as a people. Now, go to the queen of heaven. I, I sent it to you. It's the queen of heaven. Let me show you real quick how our mindset has shifted to this feminist, um, homosexual, transgender mindset. We're going to deal with that just for a minute because we got to get rid of that mind. Right before he, while he getting that, give me Ephesians four and twenty two. Let me show you something real quick, real quick. Ephesians four and twenty two. Come on, the book of Ephesians chapter four verse twenty two. Read that you put off concerning the former conversation. Read the old man, the old man. Read which is corrupt, which is what corrupt, which is what corrupt. How we corrupt? Because we was mingled among the heathen and learned their works. He's talking to the brothers and sisters in Ephesus. Well, Diana of Ephesus, which could be Wonder Woman, which could be Aphrodite, which could be Queen of Heaven, which could be Ishtar, which could be Ashtaroth, all the same goddess, which could be Isis, all the same goddess of fertility and love and sexuality. You understand? It's the same thing. So he's talking to the brothers and sisters in Ephesus. He said, look, y'all got to be changed in conversation. Just like we're talking to our brothers and sisters scattered abroad right now. You have to be changed in your conversation. You can't think like you used to think. You can't act like you used to think. You got to get rid of that worldly Negro mindset. Okay, read it again. That you put off concerning the former conversation. Read. The old man, which is corrupt. The old man, which is corrupt, how? By these idols. Read. According to the deceitful lust. According to the deceitful lust. Read. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And what? be renewed in the spirit of your mind our mind has to be renewed to knowing we israel and then we must keep the commandments to receive deliverance we must keep the commandments and faith in jesus christ to receive deliverance so read this for me also queen of heaven let's read that queen of heaven antiquity queen of heaven was a title given to a number of ancient sky goddesses worshipped throughout the ancient mediterranean and near east during ancient times so a sky goddess a sky goddess when you look up these pictures of like um the black woman is god movement the feminist movement you ever notice they always try to portray the woman as like a heavenly form like portray her as being like showing her body you know, uh, showing off her sexuality, being comfortable in her body, showing her breast, showing her behind, her figure. That's what they do. They, they try to make them immaculate looking, so to speak, because they know it's something inside men that is attracted to those type of wicked, evil things. Mm -hmm. So they use that and they push that in the media. The hot girl summer, all that stuff, that's coming from these goddesses. That's coming from these uh, queen of heaven. Watch, go ahead. Goddesses known to have been referred to by the title include Inanna, uh -huh. Anat, Isis. Isis? Still worship Isis to this day. Read. Ishtar. Ishtar, that's Easter. Read. Astarte. Same thing as Ishtar. Read. And possibly Asherah uh -huh. by the prophet Jeremiah. Read. In Greco-Roman times. So it didn't leave in Greco-Roman times. It was still around. So it didn't leave or die off in, in ancient some uh, ancient Mediter the Mediterranean or Mesopotamia. It didn't die there. It didn't die in ancient Africa. It kept going into the Greco-Roman times. Read. Hera. Uh-huh. And Juno. Read. For this title. So go down. All right. Uh, keep going. Go to uh, what I want. Astarte. That's it. Uh, is that what I want? No, no, no. Go to Ashtaroth. Or Ishtar, whatever. Isis. Nope. That ain't what I wanted. What I said I wanted. Go back up. Go back up. I think it was a start to. Go back up. I think that was what I said I wanted. Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Read that. Okay. The goddess, the queen of heaven, whose worship Jeremiah so vehemently opposed. Jeremiah is a black man. He's a prophet of God. All right? He said he's so, it's, he's so vehemently opposed. He hated that thing. Read. May have been possibly Astarte. Read. Astarte is the name of a goddess as known from northwestern Semitic regions, cognate in name, origin, and functions with the goddess Ishtar. So you see it's the same thing. It's the same thing. They, they just keep regurgitating the same goddesses, gods, and so on and so forth throughout history. Just give them different names. Read. The goddess Ishtar in Mesopotamian texts. 
Another transliteration is Ashtar. Other names for the goddess include Hebrew transliterated Ashtoreth. Mm, go ahead. Ugrat, Ugar, Ugaritic, also a tart or a thought. All praise. Now skip down to where it says Astarte was connected with. Astarte was connected with fertility. Fertility. Sexuality. Sexuality. And war. And war. Mm. You see the three attributes from this goddess, quote unquote goddess? Fertility. That's why the black woman, kids on kids on kids on kids. You know why she got so many kids? Single, she a single mother got so many kids? Because she always wanted to display her sexuality. Mm. You know why she always at war with the black man? Why she always want to be a fighter? I'm a survivor. I'm not right. going to get. No. That's all come from that right there. You understand? It all come from that right there. Keep reading. What her symbols were the lion. The lion. The horse. The horse. The sphinx. Sphinx. The now, what is a sphinx? That's a. Show it. I want, I want to see it. Show, show the sphinx real quick. Bring it out. What is this? That's, That's her symbol. So when you look at that, that. You're looking at them already showing you the black woman is God. It's a mythical creature with the head of a human, a falcon, a cat, or a sheep, and the body of a lion. Same thing. Go back. The dove and a star within a circle, indicating the planet Venus. There was a book when I was young called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. That was also during the time of the Book of Acts. Come on. Pictorial representations often show her naked. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Show her what? Naked. Naked. So you wonder why Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, uh, Beyonce, all these famous women that our women just love and glorify and look up to, you see where it come from. It come from these goddesses, man. And Esau noticed. He regurgitated and said, girl, be, be proud of your body. Show your body. Mm -hmm. Read. Astarte was accepted by the Greeks. Oh. She was accepted by the Greeks. Mm. Go ahead. Under the name of Aphrodite. Under the name of what? Aphrodite. Now, I want to deal with Aphrodite. Bring it out. Show Aphrodite real quick. Watch this. Click Aphrodite. You could just click it. I sent you the link, but you could just click that right there. All right. Okay, here we go. Let's show it. Go ahead and read that. Aphrodite. Aphrodite is an ancient Greek goddess associated with love. Wait a minute. Love. Beauty. Beauty. Pleasure. Pleasure. What? 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 Mm. Pleasure, read passion, passion and procreation. Same thing, mm -hmm. same thing. But what the what the white man does, he add another little label onto it. He says, "Oh no, she's associated with love." Read, she was syn syncretized with the Roman goddess Venus. See that? Go ahead. Aphrodite's major symbols include myrtles, roses, doves, sparrows, and swans. Come on, the cult. The what? Whoa, 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 the what? The cult. So there were people following this, and we're gonna show you who was following it too. Read. The cult of Aphrodite was largely derived from that of the Phoenician goddess Astarte, mm. a cognate of the East Semitic goddess Ishtar. Uh, damn, Ooh. so it's same, same thing same over time. and over. Same goddess re regurgitated through time, and it's all she all about fornication, adultery, and war. Read. Ishtar. Putting a woman in front oh. as being a warrior mm -hmm. of leading. That's always what it's always been. Read. Whose cult was based on the Sumerian cult of Inanna. Mm. Aphrodite's main cult centers were Satheria. I want you to listen to these names. Satheria. Cyprus. Cyprus. Corinth. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Corinth. Corinth. Read. And Athens. Wait a minute. Who was in Corinth? Who was scattered in Corinth? The Israelites. The Israelites also scattered in Cyprus, uh, Cythera, and Athens. Okay? But keep reading, though. We're going we're gonna to get back to it. Her main festival was the Aphrodisia. We're going to get into that, too. Aphrodisia. We're going to show you what Aphrodisia is today. Read. Which was celebrated annually in midsummer. Hmm. In Laconia. What celebration in Atlanta is kept in midsummer? <laughs> okay. Keep going. In Laconia, Aphrodite was worshipped as a warrior goddess. See that? That's why they put the black woman as God. She going to lead. She got the sword. She going to protect us. That's what they saying. Go ahead. She was also the patron goddess of prostitutes. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. She was what? The patron goddess of prostitutes. Now you see why they got all them statues of Aphrodite and uh, Anana and um, Astarte and Ishtar and putting these black women in front and saying they're going to they gonna lead us. Let's put them in front of the LGBTQ. Let's put them in front of the Black Lives Matter. Why? Because that's what she was the, uh, the mother of or the patron goddess of, of prostitutes. Go ahead. 
an association which led early scholars to purpose propose the concept of sacred prostitution. Wait a minute. You a sacred hoe? <laughs> you a sacred thought. <laughs> this is some crazy stuff. I'm gonna show you. Go ahead. I'm gonna show you. In Greco Roman culture, an idea which is now generally seen as erroneous. Yeah, it seems as erroneous because it was never right with God. <laughs> it was never right with God. Get that real quick in um Deuteronomy 23 and 17. Because who was scattered in Corinth, Satheria, Cyprus, and Athens? Who was the main people there? Who were some of the main people there? You got that? What I want is a, a picture I sent you of the book, who the who's who of the Bible. It's underlined in orange. It's highlighted in orange. You see it on there? Yeah, I sent it to you on Telegram. But why he getting that? You read this. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Come on. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. You Israelites, you Israelite women, you're not supposed to be whores. You understand? Go ahead. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. And nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. We're going to get into that too. Right? Go to uh, Proverbs 7 and 10. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. There are not supposed to be any whores of our women. Our women are sacred, beautiful uh, supposed to be godly women, shame face, covered up, not naked, showing their body, twerking from billions and billions of people to see across the Internet. That's not for our women. You understand? But we start following uh, the goddess Inanna. We start following Aphrodite. We start following Isis and Ishtar, which are nothing but ancient pagan gods. That's why the Lord said you're going to learn the works of the heathen amongst them. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 10. Read. And behold. There, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. There met him a woman in what? With the attire of an harlot. There met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. So she was a whore. She was a prostitute. She dressed like a whore. She dressed like a prostitute. Read. And subtle of heart. And what? Subtle of heart. We're going to show you some subtility of heart in just a minute. I got a video I want you to see of some subtility of heart. Trickery. Trickery. For women using their they body to trick these men. Men. I'm talking about Edomites, black men, tricking them, our sisters whoring themselves out, making money off these dudes. I'm talking about really real deal tricking. Mm. Go ahead. She is loud. She what? Loud. She loud. And stubborn. And she's stubborn. She don't want to hear nothing the black man got to say. That come from the ancient pagan goddesses. You got to understand where this stuff come from. It also come from Eve learning from uh, Satan in the garden. You, you, you can be as gods too. You and your husband going to be in light and you going to know good and evil. Read. And stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. She ain't never in the house. You know why? Well, where's she at? Read. Now, is she without? Now, in the streets. Read. And lieth in wait at every corner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And lieth in wait at what? At every corner. Go to Sirach 26. You know what I want. Sirach chapter 26. And uh, read verse, uh, is it 10? Sirach, yes. Yeah, Sirach yes, 26 and 9. Start at 9. Yes, sir. Verse Sirach chapter 26, verse 9. Come on. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her hearty looks and eyelids. Remember when we read, it said that she was on beauty. So they dialed themselves up to give off that impression that they're godly, to give off the, the impression that they want to do righteously, right? But in the meantime, you could tell by their dress, you could tell by their mouth, you could tell by how they act, their eyelids, right? Come on. If thy daughter be shameless, Keep her in the, straightly. The Bible says if your daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly. Why? Because they were never supposed to be whores of the daughters of Israel. The daughters of Israel were meant for one man. Read. Lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Then they abuse themselves through overmuch liberty. Guess where the overmuch liberty come from? Women feminism. Mm -hmm. LGBTQ. The new movement, uh, uh, no more slut shaming. Like Amber Rose. Amber Rose, a white woman, right? She was pushing all the black women to be hoes. To twerk, to show their body, use they use use their body, get what they want. It's always the white woman in the midst, always. Read. Watch over an impudent eye. Read. And marvel not if she trespass against thee. Read. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. What's she opening her mouth for? Think about it. Read. When he have found a fountain. Mm, read. And drink of every water near her. Read. And drink of every water near her. That's whoredom. That's prostitution. Read. By every hedge will she sit down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. By every hedge will she sit down. Read. And open her quiver. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Open her quiver. That's her vagina. Read. Against every arrow. And the arrow is the penis or the phallus. You understand? Now, you got what I showed you? Pull that up real quick. Let me show you something about Corinth. Because the Israelites was in Corinth. And that's where they learned Aphrodite. It's going to tell you that. Watch this. All right. This is from the book, The Who's Who of the Bible. Right? Who's, who's who in the Bible. Right? Read that, officer. Yes, sir. 
the international character of the city fostered the development of a variety of cults from as far away as Egypt and Phoenicia. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's what we read earlier. Mm -hmm. So people are always talking about Wikipedia, but that's what we read earlier on Wikipedia. It's the same thing. These, this goddess Aphrodite and the cults that derived or that came up during the time of when our forefathers were scattered in Greece, right, were scattered in Corinth, we're reading it right here. These, cult, these cults came from Egypt and Phoenicia. We read that uh, Anana was a Phoenician god and an uh, 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 ancient Semitic region god. Did we not read that? We read that earlier. So Egypt had Isis, uh, Anana and Estar and uh, Astaroth. That all come from Phoenicia. Read. The chief shrine, however, was the temple of the Greek goddess of love, Aphrodite. She was the number one in Greece. Mm. Her and Diana of Ephesus, those were the number ones in throughout the Greece, throughout Greece, excuse me, and especially in Corinth. But watch this. Although the cult was debased by foreign influence. Read. The priestess prostitutes. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't skip past that. It said the priestess prostitutes. Mm. They had priestess prostitutes. They had whores leading the cult. Wow. They had, uh, what's the, uh, madams, because that's what it is today, because I ain't seen the whole video. I saw a snippet of the video, and I saw some pictures from that WAP video from uh, Cardi B and uh, Megan Thee Stallion, and they got Kylie Jenner in there, and she's like the madam. You understand? She's like over it, right? And they just basically, somebody made a good point. I saw somebody post. They said, if you really look really, really deep into that video, which I ain't watched the whole video. It's too much evil. But if you look really deep into it, it's like they running through a mansion, but they've been abducted. And they running and they seeing other women that have been abducted in each room. And they trying to escape at the end. I said, now why in a time when over 80,000 black women have gone missing, why would Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B make fun of that and, and portray that as being a lifestyle? You got to ask yourself, where does this come from? Who taught us this? You understand? It comes from idolatry. It comes from ancient idolatry. There ain't nothing new under the sun. That's right. All these gods are regenerated, regurgitated over and over and over and over and given different names. And today we don't realize what we're worshiping. It says, read it again, the what? The priestess prostitutes of Aphrodite at Corinth are said to have numbered a thousand. So they had over a thousand women that were priestess prostitutes. Now, like in like any religion, you evangelize. You go out to teach other people to bring them in. You go out to try to sway other people to come in. That's what Christianity do. That's what we do. We go out to the streets to compel our people to come in like the scripture says. But you think that these priestess prostitutes when going out in the streets dressed like harlots, telling black women, girl, come on in. Girl, it's a struggle out there. They got you wearing dresses. They got you. Show your body, girl. You thicker than me. Look how thick you is. What they say? Yes. What they be doing? Yes. Go on, show your body, girl. Go on, do what you do. I remember. I ain't going to say no names. I remember when I was young, I knew a sister that told another sister, even though she was dating or in a relationship with a brother, said, look, you ain't got to sleep with him. I'm just trying to get in the club for free. Girl, go on, go on, let him, go on jump in the car with him. Now, she, now meanwhile, think about this. She in a relationship with somebody. I'm speaking on personal, some personal stuff. She in a relationship with somebody. This other sister said, girl, look, he ain't going to, it's just a night. You ain't got to sleep with him or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if her sister had, or uh, this sister had jumped in the car with that dude, and the dude sped off and left him and went and raped that woman, killed that woman. But that's the mindset of a whore. That's the mindset of a thought, a hot girl. She just want to get in the club. She just want to get in the club. Now, if you remember, we read earlier about aphrodisia. Go back to aphrodisia for me, officer. Let me go back to the Aphrodite. You still got to pull it up. Go back to Aphrodite. Now, I want you to think about something. Watch this. They liberating hoes. The sister said that they was, I think they had it on Patient Saints yesterday where the sister was like, I liberate hoes. You know what I'm talking about? You seen that little, that little clip? This was like, I liberate hoes. I give hoes a chance to be themselves. This is some crazy stuff we read, man. Right, now read that right there where it says, After Athens, it's her main festival. Uh. Her main festival was the Aphrodisia. The main festival was the Aphrodisia. We're going to get more into that in a minute. In a minute. Read. Which was celebrated annually in midsummer. Hot girl summer. Mm. You ask yourself, where that come from? Why would she just say hot girl summer? What is it about the summertime? The summertime is hot. You can wear less clothing. You can entice with your body. You can make a tinkling with your feet. Walking and mincing. Like the scriptures say, get it real quick. 
in Isaiah 3 and 12. You sisters in the truth, y'all in a privileged position because you're not falling for this. But some of our sisters are going to go back to this because it's pushed on us so much and we're not following the ordinances of God. That's why you got to always examine yourself. If you got a whorish spirit in you, don't watch nothing that got anything to do with these wicked, evil women. Stay away from it because if you indulge in it, you will get bit. Read. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. 12. Verse 12. Okay. As for my people. Oh, no, you're right. 16. I'm crying. I apologize. Go ahead. I ain't looking at it. Go ahead. Verse 16. Read. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. See that? The daughters of Zion were haughty during that time. You understand? During the time of Isaiah, which was during the time of the kings, the daughters of Israel was already haughty. Who was a main influence during that time? Let's see. Go to the book of 2 Kings. Real quick, I got something for you. I'm going to show you. This stuff been going on. It's a Negro mind. We got to get rid of it. Let me see. Go to the book of, uh, matter of fact, go to 1 Kings. Yeah, just go to 2 Kings 9.22. Let's just get straight to the point. 2 Kings 9.22. Let me show you who was one of the leading women during the time of Isaiah, during the time of the kings. You understand? Go ahead. 2 Kings 9.22. Read. And it came to pass. This may be a little bit before Isaiah's time. Right, I think Isaiah came later on during the time of the kings. But I'm just showing you during that time, women did have negative influences. That's all I'm showing you. Read. When Joram saw Jehu, read. that he said, is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, what peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. He said, what peace? Your mama running around here liberating these hoes. Liberating these women. <laughs> Ain't no peace in the city. My wife want to run off doing this. Your wife running off doing that. The hell you talking about? Jezebel out here liberating these women, letting them do what the hell they want to do. Act how they want to act. Coming from Aphrodite, coming from Ishtar, coming from all those ancient goddesses that they've been worshiping all this time. Now they call it Black Lives Matter, LGBT. It's the same thing. Read it again. And it came to pass. Well, what peace? What peace? Read. So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. Wait a minute. Her witchcrafts are so many. Many, man, Jezebel was pushing all kind of evil, killing the prophets, getting rid of the prophets of God, getting rid of the word of God. And she was running Ahab, running that Negro. You understand? Because the Negro mind. And now the black woman thinks today, she oh, I ain't influenced by nobody. This is how I feel. This is just in me. God gave me this body. I might as well show it. I was born naked. Remember that sister told us that on the, on the street? I was born naked. So why can't I embrace my nakedness? Because you a hoe. That's why. And you out here thotting, and you got three, four kids, and nothing to do. ain't in the house, but then black men ain't nothing, though. But we ain't nothing, though. Right. But you displayed yourself as that. Come on, man. Stop playing. Go to Second Cori Go to Second Maccabees 4 and 15. We're going to come back to aphrodisia in a minute, so don't let me forget about that. You can go ahead and click on it. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to show you something about that. I ain't done. Because the Negro mind is a wonderful thing to waste. We got to get rid of it. Come on. Second Maccabees 4.15. Go ahead. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Read. But liking the glory of the Grecians, best of all. Our people love the glory of the Grecians. What was the Grecians doing? They was following Aphrodite. They was following Diana of Ephesus. They was putting the woman in front. You understand? And the, and the man, the Greek man, hate women. They didn't. The, the Greek man hate women. He hated women. The only reason he kept women around was so he could procreate to make more little men to sleep with. Same thing to this day. That's the only reason he wanted women around. That's why later on in time, the white woman had the liber women liberation movement. She had the feminist movement because she was tired of her man because she know her man secretly gay. You understand? That's why. That's what we're reading. Read it again. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, Read. but lacking the glory of the Christians, best of all. We didn't want to set by the honor of our fathers. We didn't want to read about Isaiah. We didn't want to be like uh, uh, Job. We didn't want to be like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Our women didn't want to be like Sarah and Abigail and Susanna and Judith. They're like, no, I want to be a thought like Megan Thee Stallion. I want to be a thought like Aphrodite. Read. By reason whereof, so a calamity came upon them. By reason thereof, whereof, so a calamity came upon us. That's where these STDs coming from. You understand? That's what broken legs and broken, broken limbs trying to play the white man's sports. That's where that's all coming from, man. It's coming from the evil that we pushing out into the earth from the uh, different goddesses and gods we following. The idolat idolatry we following. Go ahead. For they had them to be their enemies. And avengers. So we know that these people hate us. We know that these people ain't right. But we still follow them. That's what it's saying. 
We had to be our enemies and our avengers. They're going to save us. Come on, man. Stop playing. Read. Whose custom they follow so earnestly. And we follow their custom so earnestly, read. And unto whom they desire to be like in all things. And we want to be like them in all things. We want to be like them in all things, right? Uh, Let's go to... I want to get there early. Go to sec, go to sec, 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. We were talking about Corinth, right? We were talking about how our brothers and sisters in Corinth was following these idols, right? Black women get mad at these type of classes, too. They hate us for this. I don't care. It's the last days. You better get right, sister. You better let go of that Negro mind. I know they mad in the comments. It is what it is. Bring it out. 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Be quiet and listen. Read. You know that you were Gentiles. Wait a minute. He's talking to the Corinthians. He's talking to the Corinthians. He's talking to the Corinthians. When were the Corinthians only Gentiles and now the people of God? Never. He's talking to the Israelites scattered in Corinth. That's who the Corinthians are. That's why he said, you know you were Gentiles. Y'all was acting like niggas. Y'all was acting like Greeks. We read it earlier. We just read it in 2 Maccabees. We wanted the glory of the Grecians best of all. What was Corinth? In Greece. Read. Carried away unto these dumb idols. What? 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 Carried away unto these dumb idols. You was carried away unto dumb idols. What dumb idols? Aphrodite. Zeus. You understand? Uh, what's the other one? Hermes. Hades. That all come from Greek mythology. I took Greek mythology in high school. I used to love that class. I never read the Bible when I was young. Not like that. But I used to love that Greek mythology class because it gave me something mystical, something different, something outside of the realm of, like, you know, what we read in religion, quote, unquote, Baptist and Baptist church and stuff like that. So I was infatuated by that type of history. Hercules. Hercules was born from damn Zeus' mama, I mean, Zeus' daddy touching the doorknob and, and or to become, making himself a doorknob, and, and, and uh, Hercules' mama touched the doorknob, and that's how she got prayed with Hercules. The hell is this? That's Greek mythology, man. That's 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 some crazy stuff right there. That's the Rona. The Rona was he he became the Rona and got, <laughs> he became the Rona and got on the dough now. The hell? This carrot. It's crazy. Read it again. Carried away unto these dumb idols. Carried away unto dumb idols. We started to follow idolatry, man. We started to follow straight up idolatry. Go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 5. We am almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Read. Be, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. Read. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. We was overthrown in the wilderness. God was not pleased with our people in the wilderness, y'all. Read. Now these things were our examples. And that was our example. When we're reading about, like uh, Captain Shemai went over last week, I pray he do a part two because he said he's going to do a part two. When you read about what we were doing in the wilderness, we were doing much evil. And that's what we're reading here. This was written for our example. These things happen for our examples. Read. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things. We should not lust after evil things, read. As they also lusted. As they also lusted, right? Our people lusted after evil things in the wilderness. Just like in Corinth, our people was lusting after evil things. That's what he's telling Like, y'all lusting after evil things. Y'all want the woman to be over everything. Y'all want to put the woman first, have her body being displayed, having them being whores. He was telling the Church of Christ in Corinth, the Israelites, hey, don't be doing that. Come out of that. Don't do that. Don't do like what they did in the wilderness, read. Neither be ye idolaters. Whoa, 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 whoa. Be you what? Neither be ye idolaters. Remember he said that you was carried away unto these dumb idols? He's telling them not to be idolaters, and they were. They were following idolatry. He had to correct that spirit in Corinth. Read. As was some of them. As was some of them. Read. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. When you read about Corinth, it talks about how it was a, one of the major hubs of the Mediterranean Sea. A lot of people came through. It's almost like New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Place uh, where people are always coming through ships, things of that nature. Miami, Florida is like that. You understand? You got different areas of our country that are the same way, right? So it was a big party city. So they was turned up in Corinth doing all manners of evil. Just like today, ain't nothing new under the sun. Our people was wicked back then too, right? In the clubs, prostitute, all that strip clubs, brothels, all that stuff. Been going on. It ain't new. Read. Neither let us commit fornication. Ah, see, that's how, that's how you know. He said, neither let us commit fornication, because that's what they was doing in Corinth. They was following Aphrodite, who was the goddess of what? Fertility, sexuality, love, war. She had priestess, prostitutes. Read. As some of them committed and fell in one day, 
23 and 20,000. So the Lord killed 23 and 20,000. Skip down to 14. Verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. He said, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Because the things that are going on in Corinth and y'all trying to get involved in, you better get the hell away from it. Read. Skip down to 20. Verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice. The Gentiles in this context right here is talking about the other nations. The things which the Gentiles sacrifice. Read. They sacrifice to devils. They sacrifice to what? Devils. Aphrodite is a devil. Ishtar is a devil. Ashtaroth, those are all devils. Those are all demons. You understand? And our people still following it to this day. Read. And not to God. And not to God. Read. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. And y'all don't have fellowship with devils, he's telling the Corinth, Corinthians. The brothers and sisters scattered in Corinth. Y'all don't have fellowship with that. Come up out of that. Just like we telling you brothers and sisters today, come up out of the ways of the thought. Come up out of the ways of the Negro mind. Killing your brother, hating your brother. Sisters hating your husband. Not want to submit to your husband. Want to dress immodestly. Want to use what you got to get what you want. You understand? Come on. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord. You can't be in the truth or drink the cup of the Lord. Say you following God, read. And the cup of devils. And the cup of Ishtar or Aphrodite or the women feminist movement or LGBTQ. You can't do both, read. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table. You can't be a partaker of the Lord's feast, keeping the Sabbath day, keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, read. And of the table of devils. And paganism, table of devils. You understand? Uh, what would be your Christianity? That'd be your Sunday worship, your your Easter, which is Ishtar. See, it all come back around. Right. It all come back around. It ain't nothing new under the sun, y'all. Right? Go from there. Go to the video I had real quick. Dang, man, I got to shut down soon. I got I to gotta show them this video. We're going to go from 1 minute to 2 minute 37 seconds. Say carrot top. I got to show you this. You got to see this. I got to show you this before I go. Yes, sir. It say carrot top. I got to show y'all this video real quick. All right? Yes, this one right here. Watch this. We're going to go to 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Watch this. Can't hear it. That's good. But can you? Can they hear it? Don't worry about starting over. Just pause it right to there. To get money out of a man, you got to know when to be nice, and you got to know when to be nasty. That's number one. That's number one. Because, because you have to keep his attention span first. So... You're trying to get money out of him. And there's levels. There's levels, lady. I, again, Alan has been doing this tutorial, you know. But here we are. There's levels. There's, what type of money are you asking for? And that's going to determine there's how levels nice of being you a need to be and how nice you need to be. So if you're a girl who's just asking for nail money and bill money, you, don't, you really don't have to be that nice. I'm going to get all that talking shit. I'm going to call her and talk mad shit about him. And then I'm going to answer the phone. Hello? How you doing? What time are you ready? No problem. Obedientness. That's number two. Be obedient. And I know it sounds crazy. It sounds very, but this is, we're talking about you're trying to get money out of a man. We're not, this is the topic, right? Okay, cool. Be obedient. Men like women who listen. It makes him, e it makes it easier for him to want to spend his money on you when you listen. In the same way that you want your child to get good grades, all you got to do is get A's. And I'll buy you whatever you want. It's the same shit. Get all A's in his class, and, and you'll get whatever you want. Number three, how to get money out of a man. I want to put sex in this, but ladies, I want to teach y'all something. You don't even got to give it up, and you can still get the bag out of him. That comes with playing one, two, and three at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be a multitasker. You got to be a nice girl. You got to know when to put him in his place. You got to know how to spend his money. That's number four. Men like women who know how to spend money. Just let it go to 2 minutes 37. I ain't going to say nothing. Okay? So let me, let me repeat that. Men like women who know how to spend their money. So there's the girl I take out to eat, and she's trying to spare me and not look like she's a gold digger and order a salad and a couple of things and not really eat. No, 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 baby. This is the spot you're supposed to splurge. I'm going to order that, and I'm going to order to go, and I'm going to tell him, yo, my mom is at the crib, too, and I think she might want a little, she might want, she might want a little steak, too. I ain't going to get whatever you want. My mother taught me something. How, how, you can't go home hungry and your pocket's empty. Pause. You understand what Pause. I'm saying? Pause. I remember coming. Pause. Go to Ezekiel 1644. So she said a lot within that two minutes and 40-something seconds, 30-something seconds. So the sister basically said that 
she gonna teach women how to be a hoe, how to be a prostitute, basically. How to be able to trick men out of money. That's what she said. How to get a money out of a man. That's what she's teaching, quote unquote. She even said something about something like something like um you gotta be able to play levels. There's level, you gotta be able to play all three levels at one time. So the Bible talk about women like that. But I wanna deal with what she mentioned about her mother. Her mother told her you can't be going hungry and broke, basically, if you got a man or if you with a man. Watch this, read. Ezekiel chapter sixteen, verse forty four. Behold, everyone that uses Proverbs mm -hmm. shall use this proverb against thee. Read. Saying, as is the mother, so is her daughter. As is the mother, so is her daughter. As is the mother, so is her daughter. Sisters, you cannot teach your children outside of God's laws. You must teach your daughters God's commandments. If not, she'll be like this sister right here, just on national TV, talking crazy and it, and guess what you know why she feels justified in talking like this because many of you women will share it like it comment on it and try to apply it to your life but god say be modest be a woman of god don't be jumping on every tom dick and harry get you a husband submit and she's talking about being obedient she wants about being obedient to god law because if he came in and said take them pants off and put on a dress and take that ugly ass uh well, orange wig off your damn head. She would have been like, hell no, nah, nigga, you ain't talking to me like that. So she ain't talking about being obedient to God's laws. She talking about if he say, call me daddy, she call him daddy. That's what she talking about. She ain't talking about being obedient to the commandments. So y'all sisters, don't get fooled by what she said. She the damn devil the Bible speak of. You understand? Go uh, from there. Go to the book of um, Proverbs real quick. I'm going to show y'all something real quick about these women like this. And then we're going to get done. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 3. The book of Proverbs chapter 5. In verse 3. Watch this, y'all. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb. So a honeycomb is sweet. Sound good. That's what she says she's doing. She said, I'm going to call my homegirl and talk mad noise about him and let it get circulated through the city. Then when he called me trying to check me about it, I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? You want me? Okay. That's that's the honeycomb right there. Read. And her mouth is smoother than oil. And her mouth smoother than oil. She know how to talk. Read. But her end is bitter as wormwood. Her, wormwood is poison. Her end is bitter as wormwood. It's like drinking poison. They had a song like that. Poison. Poison. That same thing, man. I'm telling you, the Bible real. Read. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Come on, watch this. Her feet go down to death. Her feet go down to death. She leading you to death. Read. Her steps take hold on hell. Come on. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. You try to ponder the path of life. You say, okay, well, 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 this, I think this might be the one. Read. Her ways are movable. Her what? Her ways are movable. That what? That thou canst not know them. She play games. That's what we just read. She play games. She play games with the man. Do this, do that. Girl, I'm going to teach you how to play level three, four, five. You don't even have to give it up. You understand? I remember a girl <laughs> I went to high school with. One day she came to school. She had a grill, gold, bottom, all that stuff like that. And we was in the 10th grade. I was in the 10th grade. She was 11th grader or 12th grader. So we there in the class, and she like, girl, one of the girls like, girl, you bling, where you get that from? She's like, I got this nigga. I'm telling you, girl, I ain't even gave him nothing yet. And they was, and I'm sitting here looking like, look at this crap. We in high school. And, of course, I was wicked as hell. I ain't know no better either. But I was just thinking, like, our sisters really had these conversations. Just like our brothers. Our brothers really have conversations like this. Right? Come on. Excuse me, verse, verse 7. seven. Hear me now, therefore. He said, hear the, he's, not, he's giving the counsel. He said, hear me now, therefore, read. O ye children. O ye children. And depart not from the words of my mouth. Come on. Remove thy way far from her. You better get away from that, sister. Read. And come not nigh the door of her house. And don't even go to her house. <laughs> read. Lest thou give thine honor unto others. You're going to give your honor to others because she's going to take your money and go spend it on her real man that she got. You think you the man. You the side Negro. You understand? Go ahead. And thy years unto the crew. And you're going to give your years to the crew. You know how? Because you're going to end up getting up pregnant and you are to pay child support for 21 years. Read. Let strangers be filled with thy wealth. And let strangers be filled with thy wealth. Now somebody else going to be filled with your wealth because this strange woman then came in and took you for everything you got. She done married you for two years. You get hurt. Fall out the league. You get hurt or you, or you lose your job. She leave you. You got to pay her alimony. Now she use your money to, to buy her new Negro or Mercedes Benz. That's the type of woman we looking at right there. That's the Negro mind right there. Read. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And your labors going to be in the house of a stranger. Damn, this Bible, this Bible real, ain't it? Read. And thou mourn at the last. And you're going to be mourning at the last, read. When thy flesh and thy body are consumed. You know why your flesh and body are consumed? Because she done gave you an STD. Now your flesh and your body consumed because you done went after a horse woman who learned wickedness from her mother. And now she doing the same thing to her mama. She get it from her mama. 
That's what we read. This Bible real, man. I'm telling you, we got to come out of the Negro mind. I, ain't got, I think I'm a little bit over my time. Yeah, I'm a little bit over my time. So let me go ahead and shut it down. Let me leave y'all with this scripture right here. Uh, let me see what I had next. Uh, Romans 8, 5 through 7. Let's read that. I ain't going to be able to finish today. I'm going to do a part two, Lord's will, because I had more. But I took too long at the beginning. But you know how I go. Romans, what I said, Romans 8, 5 through 7. Romans 8, 5 through 7. The Negro mind is a wonderful thing to waste. Get rid of it. Come Romans. to an Israelite mind. Come on. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You're okay with a woman being a whore. You're okay with a woman using her body, subjectifying herself to uh, get money from men, to lure money out of men. You understand? You're okay with brothers and uh, brothers uh, uh, treating their wives like whores, treating their sisters like whores, whoring them out. You understand? Homosexuality. You're okay with that. That is that mind that we're talking about. That's the Negro mind. He's okay with it. Well, love is love, brother. Right. Well, that, like uh, Deacon was bringing out yesterday, I forgot. It was an Edomite. He said, your thoughts ain't your thoughts. Right? Your thoughts are television. Everything you learn, you learn from television or from uh, mannerisms, how people move, what they do. All right? Come on. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. The spirit is the mind we want to have, the spirit of God, the mind of the Lord. Read. For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. To think carnally, or in this case, to have a mind of a Negro, right, that was created here in Babylon and throughout history, it says to be carnally minded is deaf. To think on that way, the way, the way she's thinking is deaf, because she's going she to try to do that on the wrong Negro, and he's going to put her to death. You understand? She's going to be in the wrong spot, trying to find somebody to lure in. She's going to be in the club, drive by, she's going to come out. We pray that don't happen. We pray the sister repent. We pray all our brothers and sisters repent. But we know that that mindset, it only ends in death. It don't end in nothing good for the Israelites. Come on. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. They said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Read. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is in opposition to God. Read. For it is not subject to the law of God. Because it's not subject to the law of God. So the laws of God is what your mind has to be on. If your mind is not subject to the laws of God, then you are going to have the mind of a Negro, the mind of a whore, the mind of a thought, an idolatrous mindset. Read. Neither indeed can be. And it can't be. Read. So they that are in the flesh. Cannot please God. See that? So they that are in the flesh or have the carnal Negro mind cannot please God. And we want to please the Father. You understand? We want to please God. We want to get right with the Father. Right? So therefore, we must start applying the commandments of God. We must let the Negro mind go. We cannot continue to hold on to it. Because if we do, we're going to end up dead. That's what the Bible is saying. We're going to end up dying. So I hope y'all got something out of that class. I'll pray to the Most High. I went a little bit over my time because I took a little too much time at the beginning uh, with some of those precepts that I didn't have written down. But hopefully, Lord's will, if the Lord sees, says the same, and I'm able to teach daily bread again, and next time we'll do a part two on this particular topic. Okay? So I'll pray to the Most High. Uh, continue to pray for leadership, pray for our bishop, our deacons, our captains, officers, soldiers, brothers that go out on the street and labor for this truth. Pray for, pray for our brothers and our sisters in the congregation. Pray for the sick amongst us. COVID-19 is real. Continue to burn the fat. Eat, eat good. If you're not eating good, come up out that fast food. Eat better. All right? Train yourself. Get yourself ready for wintertime because it's fast approaching. All right, join the Booster Club, continue to help the prophets go to the four corners of the earth to spread the gospel. All right, so with that, we say shalom, most high in Christ bless you. Shalom, most high in Christ bless you. Mr. COVID-19, they go berserk. Hey, level up. Bring the pain, Lord, tear them up. Spread the light, burn the devil up. Sorrow's here, this level one. Level one, level one. Bring the pain, Lord, tear them up. Spread the light, burn the devil up. Sorrow's here, this level one. Level one, level one. Sorrow's here, this level one. Beginning the sorrows, many more to come.